What's going on everyone? This is Dustin Stelzer from Electrician U and today we're going to talk about the differences between these three types of HID lamps. So if you're a service tech out in the field and you do a lot of like commercial service work, you're probably very familiar with seeing these different lamps. But some people that are new to this that uh, are getting into it don't know what the difference. They keep hearing metal halide, high pressure sodium, mercury vapor, and then they see all these lamps and they're like, what the hell are these things? How are they any different? How can I tell the difference? So before I start talking about how these are all different, Let's talk a little bit about how they're the same. So all three of these are HID or high intensity discharge lamps. Um, all three of them have arc tubes. So you can't really see this mercury vapor on the inside of it. Um, maybe if you like look through the glass here, you might be able to see it. But on the inside of each one, you have an arc tube. This one, this uh, high pressure sodium has like a really skinny one. Um, it's not clear. It's actually made of a, a special kind of ceramic. Uh, this one has quartz on the inside. This whole tube is quartz and it can handle high heat. Can't be just normal glass. It has to be quartz. Um, and then on the inside of this one, there's another quartz tube that looks very similar, but it's slightly different. All three of these HID bulbs require a ballast um, and they all three strike an arc through this arc tube on the inside. So they rely on an arc going through the lamp to be the thing that illuminates it rather than a piece of metal like an incandescent would be. So they all three have some sort of like arc technology that is regulated by a ballast. Another way that these bulbs are similar is that they're all kind of used for the same purpose in the same areas. Um, a lot of times if you do parking lot lighting, you'll see these things light up parking lots. Um, roadways, if you're driving down the street, most of the kind of like yellowish light going down the street or the whitish light um, is from the metal halide or from a mercury vapor. Not all the time, a lot of people use LED now and a lot of these are converting to LED because they're more efficient. But um, so like sports stadiums, things like that, that's where you're gonna notice the use of these. So now let's talk a little bit on how they differ. The first one that we're gonna talk about is the metal halide lamp. So metal halide, uh, basically the magic happens inside of this arc tube, this arc chamber. They're all the same way. That's where the magic happens. But inside of a metal halide tube, there's something different than what's in the rest of these tubes. All three of the tubes have uh, some sort of inert gas that's on the inside. And that's to protect the tungsten leads that the arc strikes in between. Um, it's to help the oxidization because that metal over time will start to kind of flake off the tungsten well and it'll deposit soot around the inside of the tube. So having an argon gas or with high pressure sodium, a xenon gas, some kind of gas in there, it kind of puts a shield around that tungsten and it lets the lamp last a little bit longer. So all three of them have that, but with metal halide, argon is the gas that's in the middle. Um, so that's just the resting gas that's constantly in this. Now there is a uh, electrode on either side of this. A ballast provides a pulse. It basically creates a small little arc in there and that arc uh, sends electrons back and forth through the, ent the entire tube and it starts to create an arc. Well, the heat and the pressure alone inside of that arc tube um, melts a teeny tiny little piece of mercury and if you look up close there's like a really really small ball of mercury in there that mercury starts to vaporize and when it does it creates a color effect it's kind of like a bluish light all of a sudden this this arc starts to turn blue and what that's doing is it's creating ultraviolet light um, that's the reason mercury is used in these so that mercury enters the vapor stream, it starts to expand a little bit, and then on the inside of here, you can kind of see that this, the, the tube, that gas chamber inside, or the, the uh, arc chamber inside of there, is like kind of muddy. It almost looks cloudy, like there's paint overspray or something all over it. And what that is, it's actually halide salts. So metal 
halide lamp. Halide salts, there's a couple of different uh, chemicals essentially that are deposited on the insides of that tube and when the temperature and pressure get up to a certain point uh, each one of them start to vaporize and enter that that arc stream in the middle of it and all of them have a certain kind of like color profile that keeps the bulb a certain color and um, in order for the color to be stable they have to put paint on the, uh, the ends, the little tapered ends of the inside of that tube. You can kind of see it's like white paint here and white paint here. Some of the halide salts that are inside of that arc tube rely on a certain temperature to be stable. And if the temperature inside of that uh, arc tube drops down below a certain level, some of those halide salts won't vaporize properly. And then you'll have kind of a shifting in color happening all the time. So they actually paint the tips of this to try to like redeposit some of that heat inside the chamber and not let it just be wasted energy. Um, but that's really how this thing works. And once it gets up to certain color, all those halide salts blend in the, the arc stream with the mercury inside the arc stream. And then it ends up being like a really bright white, um, like beautiful white color. So that's metal halide. Mercury vapor is the next one. Mercury vapor and metal halide are very, very similar. Um, if this was not coated with phosphor on the inside, you'd be able to see that the uh, arc tube inside of both of these look pretty much the same. The only difference is inside of the mercury vapor, there is no paint on that quartz tube. With mercury vapor, you don't need that because all you're relying on is the mercury inside of that tube. There's no other halide salts. There's no other like xenon gas or sodium or any other kind of thing in there. It's literally just like sending an arc through the tube, vaporizing that mercury and relying on that blue light to be the source of light in here. So some weird things happen when you see these things ignite. That mercury on the inside of that uh, arc tube is a bluish color. Um, these rely on using the mercury uh, UV light that's on the inside to uh, basically make this phosphor glow. Phosphor glows when you introduce it to UV light and since mercury running through that tube that's all it's doing is just giving off UV light. It makes the phosphor on the inside of this glow with like a fluorescent kind of uh, look to it. So when you ignite one of these things, you notice they start to be like a really weird pink color all of a sudden, and then it takes them a few minutes and then it eventually goes to like a really pretty fluorescent white color. Uh, but that's it, it's just that one gas. It's not a bunch of complicated processes going on like there is in a metal halide or even in a high pressure sodium. Now, high pressure sodium, they're, not all of their uh, envelope types are like this. They actually do have regular shaped envelopes. By envelope, I mean the shape of the lamp. But you'll notice that the arc tube on the inside of them is, is similar. Now, having a mixture of mercury and sodium inside of a chamber creates a hell of a lot of heat and pressure. So they had to design a special arc tube inside of here that could stand that. And so they figured out a way to make kind of an opaque, clear ceramic. And that can handle the heat inside of here a lot better than quartz or glass would. Um, if you try to run this lamp with a quartz or, or, uh, or glass arc tube on the inside, it would break. And that was how they designed them. They had to figure that out. What's that material we can use? Um, so very similarly to how these work on the inside of here, instead of there being an argon gas like there is in both of these for the, its base gas, um, it has xenon as its gas. Then there's still an ignition that happens. There's a high voltage pulse from a ballast that it strikes an arc all the way through the tube. That xenon is just protecting the, the uh, tungsten leads on either side. And then there are two different gases that actually ignite and enter the arc stream. The first one is mercury. So you're again, when you ignite one of these things, you're going to notice like a little bit of a blue light because that mercury heats up first. But as the mercury vaporizes and starts to heat up, there's also sodium inside of here. And sodium, if you've ever seen sodium lamps like low pressure sodium or high pressure sodium like this, it's a really orange color when it vaporizes. So the mixture of that blue color and that orange color actually becomes like it kind of looks yellowy, but it's, it's still more orange. So looking at a high pressure sodium and a low pressure sodium lamp, for instance, 
Um, low pressure sodium, the only difference is it's only yellow color. So a lot of times when you have a whole bunch of regular sodium lamps in an environment, everything looks yellow. Like you look at me, I look yellow, everything looks yellow. But the cool thing about the high pressure sodium is that mercury, that blue spectrum mixed with the orange spectrum, actually makes the light look orange, but it still gives everything around true color. So you can tell what the colors of things are rather than everything just being washed yellow the whole time. So that's pretty cool about these. So let's talk about the ballast kits that run each one of these lamps. Each one's a little bit different in how it works. So for example, this is the metal halide ballast. Let me get the lamp out of the way. Metal halide ballast looks just like the mercury vapor. Um, does, it looks a little bit skinnier than the high pressure sodium, but how you can tell them apart is the part numbers. There's ANSI numbers on each one of these ballasts. This says MH400W, so that means that it's a metal halide, 400 watt. It's for an M59 type of bulb, so you gotta make sure that the lamp that you're using is an M59. And this is actually not, this is an M47, so this ballast is not matched up with this specific lamp. I'm just using these lamps to kind of show you the differences. Um, but if you'll notice, there's this one component here, this one component here, and then the bulb itself. So this is a capacitor and this is a ballast. This is actually a multi-tap ballast, so you can take a whole bunch of different voltages into this and then the output of it uh, basically acts the same. It just has one primary coil and one secondary coil. So the primary side that you're feeding power to is completely isolated from the secondary side and the lamp. And they do that for a very specific purpose. But metal halides generally do not have any other components other than a, a capacitor. Some of them do have an igniter, but those are pulse start metal halides. And I'll talk about pulse starts in a little bit later video. All right, so now let's look at the mercury vapor. Mercury vapor is the same way. It's got a capacitor here. This is actually just a wet type capacitor um, where this is a dry type capacitor. Um, but again, it is just a capacitor and a ballast. This says that it is for one 400 watt mercury vapor or metal halide lamp. It'll take both, um, which is pretty interesting. It doesn't actually have an ANSI number on here. So uh, you'd have to look up from the manufacturer and figure out what this exact part number, what ANSI numbers are associated with it. But again, uh, mercury vapor, not a lot of components. All you're trying to do is strike an arc. The capacitor uh, helps regulate the, the stability of that arc in both of these, but you don't need an ignition source. You're not trying to put um, that much power behind the fixture that you would need an igniter. So if you look at the high pressure sodium, for instance, this has an extra component in it. There's a ballast, there's a capacitor, and this is an igniter. So an igniter basically sends a high voltage pulse into this lamp to strike the arc through it. And then once the arc is stricken through it, this thing cuts out um, and mechanically it removes itself from the equation. So then everything just starts working, but it requires this piece to even ignite this. So if you don't have an igniter on it, it will not ignite. So those are pretty much the parts and pieces of the ballast kits and how they differ. Again, if you have a uh, metal, metal, if you have a metal halide um, setup and you have pulse start lamps, you're actually going to have an igniter on a pulse start as well because um, with pulse start, they're actually using the same philosophy. They're using an igniter to ignite a pulse inside of that lamp and it helps start it more efficiently. So that's pretty much it for the similarities and differences between these. Um, I could go in a lot more in depth on how to troubleshoot, how you know if a lamp needs to be replaced, how do you know if a ballast or capacitor needs to be replaced or if the igniter is the issue. Um, I could talk a little bit more about pulse start, but I think just for the general idea of what these things are and how they work and how to tell the difference between them, um, it's, it's by the type of light that they produce. So when this thing starts igniting, it's pink, purplish, plus you can just see the frosted light. There's not a lot of metal halides or high pressure sodiums that have a frosting, uh, you know, like a phosphor coating on the outside. Um, but these are like an ultra bright white. These are kind of a fluorescent white and these are orange. So that's the best way to tell them apart. Let me know if you guys have any other questions. Uh, 
I could dive off in any kind of direction with these. I actually do have a episode that's gonna be coming out in the next couple weeks, and it goes over every kind of lamp that you could ever want to imagine. Not every lamp specifically, but all the lamp type families, like the fluorescence, the uh, HID families, the LED families, incandescent, halogen, um, kind of hits all of them. Like there's way more lamps that I cover in that, but it's really, really comprehensive and that's coming out soon. So I love you people. Thank you so much. And I will see you in the next episode.